What's going on guys? This is Vanalik Puma, back with another Borderlands 1 build video, and today I'll be going over what I think are the best builds for Mordecai the Hunter in Borderlands 1. Unlike my video on the best build for Lilith, where I was able to put together a fairly universal build for that character that allows you to use 90% of her class mods, Mordecai is different in that he really has two dominant specialities, which involve using either sniper rifles or pistols. So with that in mind, I've actually gone ahead and compiled two different skill trees for you that are designed around each playstyle. Also, and like my last Borderlands 1 build video, I'm mostly focusing on skill trees and class mod compatibility rather than on specific weapon, shield, or grenade recommendations. This is because what grenade or shield you can use can come down to personal preference, and as far as weapons are concerned, that should be pretty easy since Mordecai typically excels with pistols, revolvers, and snipers. As always, feel free to leave a like if you liked this video, and also leave your thoughts on these builds in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's just jump on in here and go over both of these skill setups, starting with the sniper setup first. So putting together this skill tree is somewhat straightforward and involves heavy investment in both Mordecai's sniper and rogue trees with fairly minimal investment in the gunslinger tree. Since we're going to be using snipers with our sniper style setup, we're going to want to pick a bunch of skills that improve the capabilities of our sniper rifles. Starting with the sniper tree and with tier 1, we're going to be picking up both focus and caliber. Picking Caliber is pretty obvious since it's going to boost the base damage of our sniper rifles, while picking Focus will improve the accuracy of all of our weapons in addition to reducing sniper rifle sway. If you weren't using snipers, you could just go with Focus here and benefit from the accuracy improvement, but since we are using snipers, it's generally a good idea to pick up both of these skills as you will see a slew of benefits from both. Now while we could move on to tier 3 at this point as we have invested enough points, I would highly recommend you go ahead and pick up tier 2's killer skill, which will boost your damage and reload speed with all weapons for a short time provided you defeat an enemy. This is a great skill for boosting DPS with all weapons, including sniper rifles, and if you're really good at quickly sniping enemies, then you should easily be able to achieve and maintain these bonuses. And even if you're not good at quickly sniping, these bonuses should carry over if you decide to use other weapon types in addition to sniper rifles. Moving on to tier 3, you can see that I picked up both Loaded and Carry and Call. Picking Loaded is a pretty obvious choice since it's going to boost the magazine size of all of our sniper rifles, while Carry and Call is great for achieving quick cooldowns on Mordecai's action skill, which involves throwing Bloodwing. As this skill describes, as long as you shoot enemies with snipers, you can reduce your cooldown time, and the best part about this is that this effect can stack, allowing for really fast cooldowns provided you're constantly shooting enemies with snipers. If you're using snipers though, both of these skills are great, and it's highly recommended that you pick up both. This of course brings us to the sniper tree's capstone, which is Trespass. Personally, I really like this skill since it makes short work of many mob type enemies and iridians due to how it can bypass shields. The mini skill improvement to bullet damage is nice too, however I think you're going to find that any additional investment beyond 5 out of 5 is sort of pointless since you aren't able to deal any additional damage. So really, investing 5 out of 5 here is plenty and any additional boosts to this skill from comms only ever so slightly improve the damage and aren't necessarily all that necessary. Ultimately though, we've got pretty heavy investment in the sniper tree with every skill picked except for smirk. However, let's now go over why I've picked what I've picked in the rogue tree. For tier 1, both swipe and swift strike are decent and I've specced into both. However, I think Swift Strike is more essential. This is mainly because the damage and flight speed improvements we receive here tend to be a bit more beneficial than the ability to receive some additional loot. Also, I think Swift Strike has good synergy with many of the other Bloodwing combat related skills that we'll be discussing shortly. This isn't to say Swipe is bad as it can be a pretty good place to put your additional leftover points, but I just think Swift Strike is more essential for our purposes. Moving on to Tier 2, you have the choice between Out for Blood and Fast Hands. 
I went ahead and decided to pick up both of these skills since a lot of sniper rifles typically have smaller magazine sizes and can take some time to reload, so fast hands is really going to benefit us in this case. As for Out for Blood, I think you'll find that it's actually a pretty great skill for survivability as it can help the player recover a bunch of their health. Granted, you have to be cautious and be sure not to go in to fight for your life while Bloodwing is active, as Out for Blood's effects get cancelled if you do, but if you are a little more cautious, you can basically negate the need for something like Riotous Remedy, which doesn't heal for as much and is overall less consistent. Arriving at Tier 3, I went ahead and went with Aerial Impact. This skill is very useful for its potential ability to daze enemies upon hitting them. And since we're going to be using Bloodwing fairly frequently, you're going to get a lot of use out of this skill. Plus, and like I mentioned earlier with Swift Strike, Aerial Impact has good synergy with the other Bloodwing combat skills, and since we're using snipers, enemies are going to be farther away, meaning they are less likely to hit you from all of the days that you're inflicting. As for Ransack, this mostly just improves your loot drops, which isn't necessarily bad, but I think you can simply get by without it, and Aerial Impact in this instance is the more central skill. Finally, we have Birds of Prey, which is the capstone skill for Rogue. This skill allows Bloodwing to attack multiple times per deployment, which combines with the other skills that I've previously mentioned like Swift Strike, Out for Blood, and Aerial Impact. After all, being able to hit two or more times instead of just one yields better damage, which feeds into Out for Blood's healing, which also feeds into the potential number of dazed enemies. Overall, I think you'll find Birds of Prey works great in concert with the other skills as you can daze, damage, and heal off a group of enemies with this skill. So be sure to max it to get the best benefits. For a final skill point allocation, I went ahead with Deadly in the Gunslinger Tree. Since we're not going to be using pistols, it doesn't make much sense to go beyond this skill since skills like Gun Crazy, Lethal Strike, and Hair Trigger are more designed with pistols in mind. Plus, while Predator is a useful skill, we can get by without it since all we really have to do to recharge Bloodwing is take advantage of Carrion Call, which entails simply using and shooting enemies with sniper rifles. Relentless would be a nice skill to have, but since we're not heavily investing into this tree, it's just better to go with Deadly for the improved critical hit damage. Overall though, I think that should pretty much cover it, and from this point, you should have about 4 points or so left over. Which means you can pick from either Smirk, Swipe, Ransack, Gun Crazy, Lethal Strike, or Riotous Remedy to spec into. For me personally, I would go with either Swipe and or Ransack for the extra loot drops, as Smirk is not as useful at maximum level, Lethal Strike is a melee skill which doesn't make much sense since we're using snipers, and Gun Crazy is a pistol related skill which is also impractical for snipers. This leaves Riotous Remedy, which you could do if you want, however I think you'll find that Out for Blood can cover it. Though I suppose if you do want the additional survivability, and you aren't concerned with loot drops at all, you can definitely take this route if you want. Obviously with this skill tree, our main class mod is going to be the Sniper Comm, which boosts focus, caliber, and carrying call, while also improving our sniper critical hit damage, in addition to either boosting sniper rifle accuracy, or sniper ammo regen. However, I think you can also get some pretty good compatibility with other class mods too. For example, the Hunter Comm is totally compatible with this setup, while the Gunfighter, Hyperion Sharpshooter, and Assassin Comms have partial compatibility. Though depending on how you decide to allocate your leftover points, you can make all three of these partially compatible comms more compatible. You could even make the Scavenger Comm work, provided you spec your leftover points into both Swipe and Ransack. Overall though, I think this skill setup should work pretty well if you intend on using sniper rifles. Just be sure to get yourself a sniper comm, a high quality shield, maybe either a transfusion or longbow grenade, and some great snipers like the Cobra, Bessie, Orion, Penetrator, or Volcano. Now that we've gone over the sniper style skill setups and gone over some of the class mod compatibility, it's about time that we went over pistol slash revolver style setups. You may be somewhat surprised to see that my pistol slash revolver style setup is fairly similar to the sniper setup with only a few differences, 
and perhaps the most obvious of which are the attainment of all of Mordecai's capstones, along with noticeably more investment in the gunslinger tree. However, like I did when I was discussing the sniper setup, let's start with the sniper tree and work our way over. For the most part, what we've done here is pick up the majority of the non-sniper specific skills in this tree, as skills like Focus, Killer, and Trespass don't actually require the use of snipers to get them to work. However, you will encounter a situation where you have to choose between Smirk and Loaded, and as you're seeing here, I ultimately decided to go with Loaded. This is predominantly because Loaded gets better with the Gunslinger Com, which despite being a pistol com, it boosts a sniper rifle related skill. This isn't a total bummer, since you can use something like the Orion with the Gunslinger Com to boost that sniper's mag size, but I will admit it isn't an ideal skill to boost. I suppose if you wanted to avoid Loaded and you're leveling, Go ahead and go with Smirk for the potential XP gain, but otherwise, I think that taking Focus, Killer, Loaded, and Trespass is going to be the path that makes the most sense. Moving on to the Rogue Tree, you'll find it's also pretty similar to my recommendations for the Sniper setup, where we're prioritizing Bloodwing's offensive-based skills over the more loot-based ones. This means you're going to be taking the Swift Strike, Out for Blood, Aerial Impact, and Birds of Prey path. That said, you will notice that I didn't spec into the Fast Hand skill, which would actually be a pretty good skill for a pistol build due to the improved reload speed and by extension better DPS. However, I think you'll find that Predator, which appears in the Gunslinger tree, is more crucial since we can't take advantage of the cooldown improvements that would normally be provided by Carry and Call. This may present some problems with some revolvers since Fast Hands is good with them, however I think you'll find that most pistols in general have pretty good reload speeds as is and thus you may be able to get by without the reload speed bonus. With this in mind, I would encourage experimentation as you may find you benefit more from the better reload speed from Fast Hands in some situations while you benefit from the improved cooldown from Predator for others. Ultimately, just try either and spec 4 out of 5 into the skill that works the best for you. Finally, we have the Gunslinger Tree, which we can go fairly into depth with since we didn't earlier while discussing the sniper setup. For Tier 1, I've decided to take both Deadly and Gun Crazy. Both of these skills are going to be great for our pistols since Deadly improves critical hit damage, while Gun Crazy gives the player a certain percentage chance to fire 2 shots per trigger pull instead of just 1. While Gun Crazy is pistol exclusive, it's still incredibly useful and will really buff the power of our pistols. Thus, it's highly recommended that you pick this skill up. Moving on to Tier 2, I actually didn't pick up anything here. Riotous Remedy can usually be covered by Out for Blood, while Lethal Strike is more ideal for melee-focused setups. I suppose it is worth mentioning that pistols and revolvers do have the best melee weapon attachment provided you get a Lacerator or Razor accessory, but I think if you're focusing on damage output with pistols specifically, you don't really need Lethal Strike, despite the fact that it is a good skill. However, when it comes to Tier 3, I think you'll find both skills are very useful. Predator serves as a good alternative to Carry and Call since we're not really going to be using snipers quite as much, while Hair Trigger is a good passive that only affects pistols and boosts their fire rate and magazine size which is ideal for us since it should boost our DPS with all pistols and revolvers. Of the two skills, I'd say Hair Trigger is more essential as you could potentially put the points you put into Predator into Fast Hands for better reload times and by extension even better DPS. As I said earlier, feel free to experiment but I'm going with Predator in most cases. Finally, we arrive at our capstone which is Relentless. This is a great skill for all weapons as well as pistols as it boosts the fire rate of your weapons in addition to allowing you to potentially deal killer shot damage. Killer shots have a 25% chance of occurring and can yield an additional 100% damage at 5 out of 5 or 180% damage at 9 out of 5, which can be really powerful on repeater pistols as well as on revolvers when the effect activates. This combination of both the fire rate boost as well as potential for killer shots makes this skill pretty powerful and arguably a must have in my personal opinion, so I'd recommend you max it out like I've done here. 
Overall, though, I think you'll find this setup is pretty good with pistols, and sort of like the sniper setup, you're still getting a pretty good amount of compatibility with various class mods. Obviously, the Gunslinger com works pretty well, however, you may also find that the Gunfighter com works really well too, provided you're using a lot of Jacob's revolvers and sniper rifles. Also, like the sniper setup, you can still take advantage of the Hunter class mod along with the Hyperion Sharpshooter and Assassin comms. So, that's certainly an option too if you end up using a lot of Hyperion weapons or corrosive elemental weapons. At this point, all you really need are some good pistols, a shield, and whatever grenade mods you plan on using, and you should be good to go. For revolvers, I would recommend the Unforgiven, Anaconda, and Defiler, while for repeater pistols, I would recommend pretty much anything, with the Thanatos, Violator, Firehawk, Hornet, and or Nemesis being among my favorites. But again, it's up to you for what you want to do. At the end of the day, I'd say pistol or sniper type setups for Mordecai tend to be the best. Of the two, I think I prefer sniper setups, but at the same time, pistol builds are pretty great too. Ultimately, I hope you guys enjoyed these builds, and I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care. And I'll see you all in the next one.